How's it going, everyone? A lot of discussion, especially on my channel and in my comment section recently, about the success of Helldivers 2 and what is contributing to that success level. Now, obviously, the game has had quite a few issues as far as its servers and whatnot, game crashing, things like that. The finer elements of the game, or let's be honest, the real crucial elements of the game, some of the real crucial elements of the game, are still being worked on, but fundamentally speaking, Helldivers 2 is an incredibly well made game, and it is doing it very, very well. You know, the live service gaming model is something that a lot of developers and a lot of publishers are really trying to go after, but it seems like some of those games do not land. I mean, we just had the release of Skull and Bones, and let's be honest, that game isn't being received all too well. Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League came out pretty recently. That game, I'm sure it'll do fine from a commercial standpoint but certainly isn't lighting the world on fire. And then you have Helldivers 2, a game that's coming from a fairly small studio in Arrowhead. Look into it. Arrowhead is not this absolutely massive studio. Yes, they did Helldivers 1, but if you look at the peak po uh, concurrent player count, which I don't think is completely logical to look at the concurrent player count of a game from 2015, but nonetheless, Helldivers 1 peaked at like seven to 10,000 players, and Helldivers 2 has recently peaked at over 400,000 players. So yes, a lot of people do want to cut them some slack, and I think rightfully so. We do gotta cut Arrowhead some slack, it's just I'm a little upset about the fact that this game has been out for what? A almost two weeks at this point, a week and a half or so, and there's still a litany of server issues. But let's not talk about that right now. The game has been a gargantuan success, and why has it been such a big success over so many other live service games that have come out, over games like Suicide Squad, Skull and Bones, I don't think anybody was really expecting that game to do well, but there's been a lot of games that didn't resonate at a high level, especially games games like Helldivers 2. It would have been very easy for this game to come out, it peaked at a certain player count, and then, you know, just like so many other games, it tapers off and then people drop off. But a week and a half later, and as I'm recording this video, there's about 200,000 concurrent players online, which yes, if you compare it to, let's say, Pal World, that's not that impressive of a number, but Pal World has fallen off as well, but it's stabilized at around 250k still. I believe that's around the number it's sitting at, which is still an incredibly, incredibly impressive number for a game that's in early access. And for a game like Helldivers 2, I was not thinking it would hit 200,000 and change concurrent players. I didn't think it was going to peak at over 400,000. And by the way, Pal World right now at 430k. But uh, Helldivers 2 peaked at over 400,000 players. When I was heading into the release of this game, you guys know my feelings of it. During the week heading into its release, I felt like the clamor and the buzz around the game was picking up quite a bit, and I was expecting, okay, this is a game that really has the potential, that if the day it comes out, word of mouth really pops off, and that means content creators are creating content for it, that means people are streaming it, people are sharing clips on social media because this is such a memeable social media style game where people on their TikToks, their YouTube shorts, their uh, Instagram reels, whatever the case may be, uh, they can share this game very, very easily. And it's a very promotable game on that front, whereas maybe it doesn't have necessarily the $200 million marketing budget or, you know, $200 million marketing budget is a little bit, a bit of a stretch, but you get the idea, the, the very expensive of marketing budget, what it will have is some people checking it out initially and then it spreads like a virus where people are sharing it and this is the kind of game you want to have a squad of people to play with. And I've heard it over and over again of one person checking out Helldivers 2 content then them sharing the trailer to their friend, and then at that point, it's over. Everybody's talking about it in that friend group, and suddenly, one person having some interest in Helldivers 2 ended up being six people having interest in Helldivers 2. And if you can manage that off, that's incredibly effective. Now, you would hope that that would be the case for multiplayer games in general, but let's be honest. One of my friends had interest in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. Do you think he was sharing gameplay all over our Discord? And I get it, this is anecdotal information, but I'm sure this is applicable to some of you guys as well. Do you think that person was sharing information about Suicide Squad Kill? No, he wasn't. He just wasn't. He's a huge DC head, and he had some excitement for that game, but it wasn't one that was being shared. Helldivers 2, for whatever reason, and I have a lot of thoughts as to why it is, I just think the chaotic nature of it, the over-the-top nature of it, and in a game 
gaming environment and in, a, in an environment in general, which I know some people don't like to hear, but attention spans are shorter than ever. Why have YouTube shorts popped off? We don't really do a lot of YouTube shorts on this channel, but let's be honest, YouTube shorts have popped off, TikTok has popped off, all these things have popped off because you get this information in 30 to 60 seconds, and it's very easy to sell a game like Helldivers 2 in 30 to 60 seconds, and I feel like that was a very effective uh, marketing strategy. I don't even know if it was a marketing strategy by them, it just kind of fell on their lap of Helldivers 2 being shared in this new world of social media very effectively, and outside of that, I think one thing that this year has really taught us is the budget price point of games. That is still something that is very worthwhile to look at. Pal World, priced at $30, and Shrouded wasn't super expensive, and now Helldivers 2 is another game that's not your typical $60, it's $40, and you can get it cheaper on uh, other e-tailers and whatnot, that is an incredibly attractive price point that, yes, if it's a game that you're gonna sell to your friends, I don't know if this game would have been as easy to sell to all my friends if it was a full $60 release. Now, some people did check out the Super Citizen Edition, and I'm not gonna lie, I think the majority of my friends at this point, because they like the game so much, have sunk money into the game that effectively made it a $60 game, but the initial uh, element of them checking out the game, I do believe that $40 price tag was incredibly attractive, and you look at other live service games, what I always talk about when I think live service games are getting a little bit too greedy, and I get it, it's a business, we gotta make money, but I look at a game like Suicide Squad, I look at a game like Skull and Bone, those games both had $70 price tags. Not only that, you also had a deluxe edition release for the games that had this early access gimmick tied into it. That's It's not really early access, guys. The game is done. So if you wanted to play the game at the real release date, you have to pay $100. And on top of that, you have battle passes. Helldivers 2 didn't have that early access gimmick. It does have your battle pass style gimmick attached to it with the war bonds, but it's also a $40 game. So it's doing one of the things in battle passes and it's not an overly expensive game and it's not something that's doing a deluxe edition early access gimmick. Those are the three things I usually look at. I'm like, all right, these guys are trying to drain as much money as they can. And you look at Helldivers 2 from a monetization standpoint as well, at this point, and that can change overnight when it comes to a live service game with how they implement it, but at this point, it is super, super tame how they implement the monetization aspects. You can get the Steel veteran, uh, steel Veterans War Bonds just by playing the game. It's not too, too difficult. You get 100 super credits by just going through each page of the regular War Bond, and you'll have a 1,000, and you'll get it. Yeah, will it take a little bit of time? Sure, but you're going to invest quite a lot of time into the game, and getting the super credits, uh, it does take time, but it, you can end up getting all of that, and then they do have the Superstore with a rotating catalog of stuff to buy, but it's definitely not too egregious, and we just had a game in Diablo 4 drop $65 horse bundle content, like, uh, as far as microtransactions go, I feel like Helldivers 2 is relatively tame, all things considered, and this should be a case study going forward of how to do live service games, and I've been talking to people over and over again that have played a lot of live service games, and everybody, uh, or at least mostly everybody, outside of things like the server issues, outside of server capacity issues, and things like that, and I get it, I give Arrow had some slack. They've been super, they've been doing a really good job, by the way, of communicating with their audience and giving us updates on social media, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and again, smaller studio, I get it to an extent. But as far as the fundamental aspects of the game, a lot of people are just like, this is how live service should be done. And uh, for me, when the game works, it is such a great time. And it is really revitalizing a lot of my love for multiplayer games in terms of co-op titles just being something you can jump into, have a great time with friends. You don't take it too seriously. Although, let's be honest, I don't know about you guys. Some people do be getting salty at some of this friendly fire, which I think is a gimmick for the game that makes it even more fun. I don't think you have to get that salty about it, but I get it, the egregious griefing uh, can get a little bit annoying, especially, like, guys, if you're not trying to do any griefing, if you're doing some accidental grief uh, griefing, uh, the stratagems are certainly something that can cause a lot of griefing. I prefer the stratagems, you know, if, you, if I'm not trying to grief, uh, that are more isolated and are more uh, impactful in terms of where you're gonna hit it. The helium barrages and whatnot, yo, you finna, you finna create some nonsense if you're using those, but that's just my two cents. Again, I think the price point is a big deal with it. I think the marketability on social media in today's climate is a big part of it. And I also think the game being really good and something that is so over the top and so eye-catching uh, is a big part of it as well. I do think if a lot of these companies, and we know a lot of these publishers, are moving into doing more live service games, um, even if you implement everything Helldivers 2 is doing, there are so many variables. I look at games like Knockout City. Knockout City was a pretty cool game. It was priced accordingly, and that game didn't pop off. There are certain games that are just not going to pop off, but I think 
think when you look at a Skull and Bones being $70 and it not even getting a Steam release and uh, it having all of the kind of greedy, I hate saying the word greedy because it's a business, but greedy uh, fundamentals and the greedy practices kind of baked into it, I just think you're setting yourself up for failure. And Skull and Bones, maybe Ubisoft went into it and they're setting stuff like, it's a quadruple A game just because, you know, to like meme on people. But uh, at the same time, I'm just like, yo, that game was set up for failure. And Suicide Squad, uh, I could do a whole like three hour video on that game. But nonetheless, that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts. Why do you think Helldivers 2 is as popular as it is? I threw out some of my ideas of him. The price point is very attractive. I think the game's marketability on social media is incredibly strong, even if it didn't have have a focused marketing push by Sony and PlayStation. Uh, what it did have is the people just talking about it. And I've always said that's more effective marketing than anything you can buy. But that'll do it for me. Your thoughts down below sound off there. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.